Director Ryan Johnson, famed for his previous works like Knives Out, Glass Onion, Looper and The Last Jedi, well, his subversion got a bit out of hand in this one, right? Anyway, the man with mostly good films in his biography developed the American television program Pokerface for the Peacock streaming service, a murder mystery series starring Natasha Leone as Charlie Kale, a casino employee on the run who becomes involved in a number of unusual murders of strangers along the way. The show is a case of the week mystery comedy drama that focuses on the characters and how this human lie detector and ex-casino employee will catch them. The series follows the format of how Catch Him, which was popularized by the show called Columbo. Johnson wanted to do something like a quantum leap or Columbo thing, where every episode is a deep anthropological dive into a little area of America that we might not see otherwise. The series premiered on January 26, 2023, with the first four episodes of Poker Face being made immediately available and the remaining six episodes following on a weekly basis. In this video, we will talk about the fifth episode and explain the ending in detail, but before that, a spoiler warning is in order for those who haven't caught up with the series yet, as we will be discussing important plot points and character details from the show. But if you have caught up with it already, let's dive straight into the video. Here you come again. In this episode 2, we see Charlie working odd jobs to survive on the road and the nomadic crime-solving detective now works at the Mossy Oaks retirement home. Anyway, the episode begins inside the retirement community. While Irene, played by Judith Light, takes care of her marijuana plants, Joyce, played by Essie Mergerson, talks with her about everything from Pluto's status as a planet to whether strawberries are nuts. After coming to the hall, they argue with Billy about wearing a heart monitor bracelet all the time and Betty, most likely their rep representative reminds the pair about their planned trip to the zoo. The two then come across Ben, a recent arrival at Mossy Oaks. After looking at him, Irene and Joyce appear stunned as if they have seen a ghost. Later, the pair decides it's high time to commit a crime as a Ben needs to die. We have to kill that motherfucker. In a montage, Joyce treats the gardener some of their homegrown weed for some gardening chemicals while Irene crashes her wheelchair into Billy as he pushes a cart full of goods. She stashes a few syringes away when Billy isn't looking. On the day of the zoo excursion, Irene is wheeled to the restroom by Joyce, then she uses only her upper body strength to mount the trailies outside after climbing out of the bathroom window. She reaches a sleeping Ben's window, takes off his heart monitor bracelet and replaces it with her own, which is completely discharged. Irene then injects Ben with the lethal chemical that they acquired from the gardener and hides the syringe after going back to the lobby. Later that day, Irene and Joyce look at a sparsely populated spot at the zoo and use it to inform the staff at Mozzie Oaks about Ben's demise. Irene is wearing Ben's walking heart monitor bracelet as Joyce teases her, and to the medical staff, it seems that Ben has had a heart attack. Of course, Ben is already dead when Billy and the others show up. Then we cut back a few days when the Fletcher snap at Charlie as she vacuums the retirement home facilities while they are watching their crime series. Betty informs Charlie about all the members of the retirement community, including Joyce and Irene, and warns her to avoid them. Charlie being Charlie, she naturally ignores that advice and becomes best friend with them. They play shuffleboard and smoke marijuana together. Charlie discovers everything about Irene and Joyce's 1970s protesting activities. She also gets to know about Gabriel, a handsome and well-endowed man with whom the two had a threesome. Even the droopy youth band used their image as the album cover. Later, the women tell Charlie about a field protest and how Gabriel sacrificed himself by going outside to confront the police. But the police stormed into their base of operations with pistols drawn and shot Irene once in the spine. Since that day, she has been using a wheelchair and the women spent the next three decades in prison. Then we see Luca and Ben arrive at Mossy Oaks. However, Ben is just an alias used by Gabriel to conceal his real name. The two are escorted to Ben's new room by Charlie. Before leaving, Luca uncomfortably embraces his uncle and introduces himself as Ben's nephew. Ben meets Joyce and Irene that evening and the two learn that he assisted the police with the raid and guided them to the group's hiding place. Since then, he has been under witness protection. As he apologizes for his conduct, Irene tells him that she lost her legs that day as a result of his betrayal. But the two accept his apology and grant him their forgiveness. But as he departs, Joyce and Irene resolve to murder him. His full-on plural reverse, Chaches La Femme on acid. Sorry, Mayuan. 
After Irene and Joyce kill Gabriel, the gang goes to the zoo afterward. And Charlie displays her new t-shirt featuring the Ruby Hughes album cover, which features a youthful Irene, Joyce and Gabriel to the duo. Charlie becomes fascinated with the performance of Melanie the monkey as Joyce and Irene go to perform their teaser act to inform Ben's death. After learning about Gabriel's death, Charlie attends his funeral wherein she finds out that Luca is Ben's kissage. As they pay their respects, she also finds a picture of a young Ben who looks exactly like the young Gabriel on her droopy used t-shirt. Charlie mistakenly informs Luca of the pair and the following day Luca and his agents come to the retirement home to question Joyce and Irene alone. But their alibi checks out as they were at the zoo when Ben, I mean Gabriel, died. Luca reveals why Irene and Joyce spent so many years behind bars. They were planning to bomb a model UN group on the day the police raided their hideout. She gets confirmation from them regarding their plans to bomb the children of the rich assholes. After she leaves, Joyce and Irene make the decision to murder their new friend. Later, after consulting with the crime specialist Flashers, Charlie discovers that sodium nitrate, potassium chloride, calcium chloride, and epinephrine are excellent heart attack inducers. After confirming with the gardener what Joyce took from him, Charlie calls Luca with her latest finding. She also notes that the monkey telling time at the zoo around the same time Gabriel died seems coincidental, as the duo didn't attend the show. Charlie teases Billy's help who shows her the monitor chart for Gabriel. They discover a specific spike on the chart around the time they leave for the zoo that looks suspicious. It appears someone else was wearing the bracelet at the moment. Charlie calls Luca back and presents a theory of what transpired including the ladies faking Gabriel's cardiac spike at the zoo. Next, Charlie calls Betty to get some intel and she informs her that they are engaging in an obscene act. But finding that Betty knows something, the duo messes with her pressure cooker which explodes resulting in Betty's death. Charlie then welcomes the women in their own room after they have killed Betty and she describes in detail how Gabriel was killed. Listening to that, Joyce hits Charlie in the head and tries to inject her with lethal poison to put her out for good. Charlie teases herself causing a cardiac spike to occur because she is wearing a heart monitor bracelet from the retirement community. Billy storms into the home followed closely by Luca and the agents to capture the violent women in the act. Once the pair is ultimately apprehended, Charlie gently declines Luca's offer to work for the FBI. But after he leaves, Charlie has to leap out of the golf cart before it explodes as it is the duo's final attempt to get rid of her and Charlie rightfully flips the bird in their general direction. The episode masterfully reinvents the genre with great subversive writing. The performances of Judith Light and S.E. Murkerson, especially in the silent scenes, are mesmerizing. Despite their heinous crimes, we can understand their motivations and love them all the more. The episode is called Time of the Monkey and the name of the episode is also significant. Not only as we get to see a monkey telling time, but according to the Chinese zodiac sign, the time or year of the monkey signifies cleverness. And like a clever monkey, we also get to see Irene using the vines to climb up to Ben's room and using the common pesticide to kill him. Near the end of the episode, we also hear Charlie asking the FBI about Casimir Kane. Did you guys ever get my email about uh, Casimir Kane? Who will probably play a big part in the series. He is probably an important character in Charlie's life. We will talk about the rest of the episodes on a weekly basis as they releases. So if you don't want to miss any of our poker face episodic explanations and discussions, subscribe to our channel. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching the fifth episode of Poker Face. Press the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one. And for the time being, we are signing off. The church is out. I've been rich. It's easier than being broke. It's harder than doing just fine. And I'll be back.